It's Bob and Tom Tonight, starring Chick McGee, Christy Lee, Josh Arnold, Ace Cosby, Pat Godwin, Willie Griswold, and Tom Griswold. And here's Tom. Thank you very much, and I get the uh, a privilege of introducing another guest. Okay, he you is, need to, uh, no, he needs to either move to another place in his house or get rid of that awful <laughs> painting behind him. <laughs> it's, it's Reno Collier. It and, looks uh, like a, a, a white tablecloth at some bad restaurant where they tried to put these cigarettes out, and they keep missing the ashtray. <laughs> and they, hit, and they, and they, they serve a lot of mustard, it looks it's like. hideous. It looks like an artist's it interpretation is. to what Exxon Mobil did to the Gulf of Mexico. A little bit. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what sucks? Is my wife spent a lot of money on that thing. <laughs> oh, I bet. That's the painful part of it. I told her, I, I initially thought it looked like, a, like what you said, like a picnic table napkin after a cookout. Yeah. Like it just has every mush. Of, but I have to stay down here. My dog, Bo's flipping out. So if I go upstairs, my wife takes off for the gym and then he just barks and flips out. Okay, well, it's kind of a non-representational painting, kind of a, a what would you call it, abstract? Um, Waste of money. Okay. Garbage. Yeah, very <laughs> cool. I'm sure she loves yeah. it. That's nice. Uh, what room are you in? I'm in the dining room. Oh, so you have to eat and look at that thing? <laughs> Lost my no, I face, I face, you notice which direction I'm facing? I don't look at it. It just pains me. Every time I think about my Amex bill, I'm like, oh, for yeah. that? I was, uh, I was having breakfast with my nine-year-old daughter, Finn, on Saturday morning. We, we like to go to different pancake places. We're trying to find the perfect pancake. So we're at this pretty, yeah. this, with this pretty nice place, enjoying, enjoying some pancakes. And it's one of those places where the tables are kind of close and this, this, um, uh, a couple ladies come and sit down next to us. We're about halfway through. I had to stop eating. The perfume she had on was so awful. Uh. I could taste it along with my syrup. And I thought, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, looking at that painting would be hard to eat. That yeah. Is, uh, is I got, for, for Father's Day, speaking of eating, like, uh, my kids, my family's really religious, and we all got together yesterday, and people were opening up their Father's Day gifts. My kids got me uh, the... Snoop Dogg cookbook. Yeah, oh, man. Nice. Um, that thing. Yeah, it's called From Crook to Cook. <laughs> and uh, it's it's good. The only thing is, I'm pretty sure he didn't write. First of all, when I opened it up, I pull it out and I go, Snoop Dogg. And my 12-year-old nephew goes, ooh, cooking with the devil's lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And I was like, what, dude? What did you say? Turns out he and I are the only ones in front of all 20 people that knew what that was. <laughs> my, my, my stepmom's like, that's the guy from the Doritos commercial. I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. Uh, from that's the, yeah, that that's exactly. Is, yes. <laughs> but I don't think he wrote, because you read it, like, I think he came up with the names, like The Smoothie, like T-H-A Smoothie. Nice. But then when you read it, it's forwarded by... Uh, Who's the chick that he likes? Martha Margaret. Stewart, maybe? Yeah. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart, yeah. Because yeah. she didn't snitch. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't think he wrote it because it's like one of the things, time to wake yourself up and what better way than with the most important meal of the day? Yeah, that's not Snoop. <laughs> that's not Snoop. No. no. What no. has happened to my gangster rap? Like, Ice Cube is like in a movie with six kids on a camping trip and Ice <laughs> T is a cop. Oh, like, yeah. all the gangsters from my youth have turned into, there's <laughs> kale in it. Yeah. I don't want to think about Snoop Dogg with this kale is, in his refrigerator. It's honestly, I'm not condoning violence, but I am kind of be, I'm kind of glad that guys like Biggie and Tupac passed away. Because I don't want to see, you know, Tupac in a new movie where him and Justin Bieber are going to the islands this summer. You know, right. I don't want right. to watch, I don't want to get the Biggie yeah. Smalls cookbook. Yeah, that actually reminds me of this news story we had this morning um, in Abilene, Texas. These uh, people were attacked by uh, young folks on what they call bird scooters, those rental scooters. And it talks yeah. about this. They literally say, this report from KTAB Television, um, a gang riding bird scooters began harassing these people. It ends up in this big fight. I mean, scooter gangs... Really? What are they like? The, the H E double hockey sticks angels? <laughs> They're uh, the, doing security at a Partridge Family concert. I don't know. It, it just they do drive-bys with tennis balls. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I tease this. We never got to this story. This is a really nice, nice story. Uh, John Cena, the who's uh, by the way a terrific actor, and is most famous. I guess. Well, you can't see him half the time because he's a you know 
Mm-hmm. Wrestler. Thank you, Willie. Mm-hmm. Um, he had heard about this uh, disabled teenager who'd been smuggled out of Ukraine that had been taken to the Netherlands. Cena actually flew there to see him. This kid's mom had told him when they were trying to get him out because he had some difficulties. He He's unable to speak, but his mom was going, hey, when this is all over, as they're you know going in these various underground places to get this kid out of the country, she goes, we're going to get to meet John Cena. Cena read about this and actually flew there to meet the, I mean, what a That's great awesome. guy. Awesome. I've read for years that he is like the coolest guy. Mm-hmm. But, Reno, uh, you should look up the video online. He picks the kid up and choke slams him through the kitchen table. <laughs> you have never seen a happier child. <laughs> oh my gosh, it made us dead. <laughs> That's <laughs> not. That's not, that not true. A happy ending. <laughs> uh, okay. And um, one more thing, Reno. You're a divorced guy, right, Reno? Yeah, remarried, but yeah, I'm not divorced from this one yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't say yeah, but, right now. Uh, this is all good. Okay, tick, tick, good. tick. Okay. Until good. we get rid of this painting. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, I would write that into the divorce decree that, <laughs> that the goes painting with goes yeah. with her. Uh, I get my truck, you get that picnic <laughs> table trash painting. Yeah. No, I'm, we've all been at that point in our lives where we're, uh, trying to get by eating whatever it is spaghetti every night but here's a case of a guy divorcing his wife because she made instant noodles every night for every meal um and the uh <laughs> the case was brought up this was this is in the new india express um the mysuru district judge dubbed it the magi case the husband said his wife did not know how to prepare any food other than magi noodles hmm. breakfast lunch and dinner Finally, the uh, divorce was granted by the judge. So, what country was this in? This is in India. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, wow. I, I was going to say, not here. No. I would be okay if it, I could eat spaghetti every meal. I'm a big fan. I imagine, aren't these noodles uh, very heavy in salt? Oh, probably. The, the sodium might be a problem for me. But I could yeah. do chef it's a slow a kill. Spaghetti and meatballs, I'll eat that every day. I don't care. Really? The can. If Josh yeah. and I were here, we I would say the canned Chef Boyardee ravioli. That's the uh, that's yeah. the high point for that company. Oh yeah, that's some very good stuff. If you could only have one thing to eat every day, Reno, what would it be? If you had to have the steak. same dinner every day, steak, steak, really? Oh yeah, I could eat steak. There's so many different ways to cook it and things to do to it. No, yeah, you could mix it up. I've okay. thought about that. Um, <laughs> your cholesterol might not yeah. be also keen on that, yeah. but that's interesting. Uh, Willie, I mean, look at the painting behind me. You really think I'm trying to hang out for a long time? Yeah, good point. <laughs> Let's Willie, get this thing Willie's, rolling, man. Same thing every day. What would you eat? Some version of a burrito bowl. Something with rice, some oh. pork or chicken, some beans on there. Because mm-hmm. you can mix it up, and it's not not too not going to give you heartburn every day. Ace every day. Pizza. Yeah. Pizza. See, that's your heartburn. Ooh. Heartburn. Yeah, after no, a week, a week of right. pizza every day, and you hate yourself. Chick? I think pizza would be my really? answer, too, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Maybe better, cheese, maybe pepperoni, maybe sausage. Pepperoni? No, Big for crust, the toppings, you need to have crust. Tums, Chick, because tums? you're going to have such bad heartburn all day. I don't think okay. so, Willie. Ballsy? <laughs> Either pizza, a supreme, because you can make it different every time, or uh, some type of a, like a chicken Alfredo, maybe. Mm, Mr. Oski? No, I'm pizza all day long. You got your breakfast pizza, you got your lunch pizza, sure you got do. your dinner pizza. Fools. Yeah. You got it. Fools. <laughs> you know what? Hang on. I've thought about it. Maybe some sort of uh, rice bowl is what Thank I'd have. Oh, okay. Yes, all right. yes, yes, yes. I say, exactly I say right. spaghetti. I think this guy getting divorced because his wife's just making him noodles. This guy's a jackass. Who wouldn't enjoy having spaghetti every day? And you have to say it. Spaghetti. Okay. It's spaghetti time. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you very much. Areno, I don't know if you know this, but you're working this weekend. He has no I idea. am. I can't wait, man. Do you remember I'm where it is or do I have to look it up again? At Decatur, Illinois, at the Devon Lakeshore Amphitheater. Wow. When you get in your when you get in your car, do you have any idea where you're going? Do you have to get a piece no, of No, I just put my phone in and I listen to this British chick yell at me to turn left and okay. watch out for okay. Okay. Oh, that's nine hours. Nice. Have oh. some good shows. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, Thank tell you the very much. guys. Have a great week. Tell everybody. the cleverlies to change their name. Oh, from chick right. McGee. Okay. Uh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Jessica Alsman sitting in for Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What have we missed? A Kentucky restaurant created by KFC founder Harlan Sanders for his wife is up for sale. Huh. It's the Claudia Sanders Dinner House, hmm. a restaurant and banquet hall in Shelbyville. It went on the market this week. 
In addition to the restaurant, the three-acre property features a house where Harland and Claudia Sanders live for more than 20 years. The sale also includes the trademark and likeness of the Claudia Sanders name, as well as memorabilia from the Sanders family. But it's not the original KFC. That needs to be made clear. Correct. It's, Man, my, it's no. my understanding from the realtor they only get eight of the 11 spices. Uh, uh, <laughs> you have to guess the other three. Yeah, yeah, I okay. like that. Man, like and that's this. some good chicken. Mm. Oh. But this, this is not the KFC. This is like the Jim Belushi of restaurants. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. good, but it's, you know. It sounds very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, I, this article's kind of confusing. Apparently, the uh, it's something like $5 million. Okay. For the restaurant. Yeah. So it's fairly steep. You get a restaurant, three acres, and a house. And the basketball team. Oh, really? You know, the Harland Globetrotters. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> they all dress up like they all dress up like the colonel. They got the big tie. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if the Harland Globetrotters went up against all the guys with the, the boat tie? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, I could talk you into wearing a bolo tie for any reason, Tom. Anyway, like a bolo. One nice day, one day. I'd be happy to. I think I might. I'd be happy to. Okay, all right. Ridiculous, but uh, I'm going to hold you to that. <sighs> but, but this actually reminds me, uh, Pat. I don't know if you need a capo for this one. I'm sorry, I didn't give you any warning. Chicken song capon. Um, oh. uh, we had a, a news story um, earlier about the. About uh, the, the KFC. Do you remember this one? Yeah. It didn't, you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the woman got mad. This woman called 911 because uh, she hadn't gotten enough of her, uh, what was it, chicken nuggets? Chicken or tenders, I Chicken tenders at KFC. It was actually, an eight-piece eight box. She only got seven or something. Actually called the police. So, yeah. um it, it, this, her name, this happened in, in Euclid, Ohio, which is not too far from Cleveland. Uh, her name is Lisa Castro. She's 62 years of age, and she called 911, quote, upset because she only got four pieces of chicken instead of eight, as you stated, at KFC. So uh, you got a tribute to this lady? Um, I do. I am. Chicken tenders <laughs> ordered eight. <laughs> Bitch just gave me four. <laughs> Come on, man. I am calling 911. I'll have the cops here at your door. Chicken tender, saucy, sweet. I'm waiting in my SUV. But my chicken order's not complete. F U K F C. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, she I'm was waiting. waiting for the police in a Dodge SUV. By the way, the police stated to the woman uh, a drive through order is not a police matter. Oh. So uh, I guess she had to resolve it herself. Well, who, who, did, who are you supposed to see? I think you go straight to the FBI with that. You go straight to the top. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to get a flat tire on the way home. Look who's up on the TV. Tom. There we go. Um, it's another victim of the COVID. Uh, Greg Warren. No, no, no. What do you mean, no? The picture doesn't count. No. Um, no, absolutely chick, I'm, not. I'm running out of stuff here. Well, <laughs> no, whatever, that, whatever you know what calls. that is, mister? That's piss poor is what that is. <laughs> no, it uh, is. It uh, is last it is. week, you had a photograph of uh, the baseball great Warren Spahn. The idea yeah. of this, the Warren Report, you always have another poster behind you with something Warren related. This time, it's War and Peace. The poster from the movie version of War and Peace, uh, perfectly valid. Good God! Thank yes. you, Tom. I, I, Chick, there's not a lot of Warrens left. How about uh, the fabulous Jack Burns as Warren in uh, Andy Griffith, the Andy Griffith Show? I'll take a look at that. Oh, Remember the po that? the post Barney, post Barney. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. no. A lesser no. Barney. Yeah, no, yeah. Without no, Barney, I don't know. Without Barney, there there was no point. Although like, he was very Warren funny, but peace. nevertheless. Uh, now, do you still have the COVID? Josh is still testing positive. Uh, well, I am uh, ten days out from a, a positive test, so I'm 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 free to go. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe you can come here and sit in for. Yeah, we'd really appreciate. It. <laughs> Evidently, Josh has forsaken us. It doesn't yeah, look good. Yeah, he said he's still still a little foggy. Yeah. 
I mean, when I had it, the CDC said after five days you were good to go. And my dad was calling me to get me in here like it was nothing. He was ready to kill the whole staff. Really? I don't get what's going on. <laughs> yeah. You know? well, uh, I'll tell you what's going on. Josh is slacking. <laughs> He's a slacker. He's lagging. Yeah. He's lagging yeah. behind. Okay. Uh, now, what's on your mind today? Do you have a topic for us? Yeah, I wanted to talk about the history of blue jeans. Hmm. Uh, Genoa, Italy, 1500s. Uh, really? They... Uh, yeah, they made uh, actually uh, the first work pant. They were made from uh, sails from boats, which uh, those guys probably got it good, huh? Hey, look who it is. Old sailboat pants. <laughs> <laughs> Ahoy, matey. <laughs> who had the accident? You were the seagull. Uh, <laughs> that's actually a great uh, idea. Yeah. Uh, and then the French copied it like they usually do. Uh, they uh, came up with their own version of a work pan. It was a little more comfortable. They uh, weaved one white thread with a, an indigo thread and came up with uh, a, something that resembled a little bit more like the blue jeans that we know today. Mm. Uh, it was in Nimes, France, and uh, the word of in French is de, so de Nimes. That's how you get denim. Oh. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, blue, do you know why they use blue? No. To hide dirt, that was uh, it. It, uh, it hid dirt, which uh, wouldn't you have gone with made? brown? Uh, I don't know. I think they, they, the blue hides the dirt a little bit. You ever seen a dirty Smurf? I'd argue if I could. I've seen some dirty Smurf videos. That I, don't <laughs> I know what official. you're talking about, Willie, and yeah, that's man. not what I mean. You're just watching <laughs> the regular Smurf. video. Why do they call? Why do they, they call dirty movies blue movies? By the way, hmm. I know that. I don't know. Blue. You're I can tell you, uh, we had a guy working in the box office at the comedy club, but uh, Dan McKenzie's worked there for 18 years, and uh, somebody called. Uh, Dan's a, a different guy. They called and said, "Is the comedian blue uh, tonight?" And Dan said, uh, "The headliner is African American, and the feature <laughs> act is white." <laughs> <laughs> not a blue guy in sight. Not really, not really clear on a couple of the yeah. slang yeah. terms. Uh, cut to uh, Reno, Nevada. Uh, Jacob Davis is a tailor, mostly serving uh, gold miners, and uh, he made pants for gold miners. And uh, one of the gold miners' wives came up to him and said, "Hey, we like your pants, but they keep falling apart in certain areas. Uh, they had like sort of high stress areas, like the." You know, the pockets, the crouch. And uh, uh, he, they said, can you do something about it? And he did. He, he started putting copper rivets into the high-stress areas. And uh, people like those pants a lot. Uh, they started uh, selling off the shelves. Jacob wanted to patent this idea, but he didn't have the cash. So he went to his buddy who supplied him with material, a guy named Levi Strauss. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Wait. Minute. Yes, yeah, I yeah, know you know him. this guy. Yeah. <laughs> 1873, 1873 was when they patented Levi's. Uh, you know, uh, what they call them riveted work pants. Or so Strauss like and this other guy get lost in history, but Levi gets all the credit. Jacob Davis, yeah, uh, Levi, uh, no, Levi Strauss, Levi first name Strauss, uh, last name. So oh, so, they, so Mr. Levi, so we Mr. Strauss have, gets the credit. Yeah. Instead of Get calling this. them Levi's, we could have called them Jakes. Is or Strauss. Right? Could have called them Jakes. I call them Jakes. I call them Jakes. <laughs> All right. Always have. Uh, uh, Where are my blue Jakes? <laughs> yeah. And so you take your it, Jakes off. That's right. Levi was a German immigrant, and his, his, his real name was not uh, Levi. Uh, Adolf? It, it, a uh, lobe. Oh, lobe. sorry. Mm -hmm. You're not helping, Chick. <laughs> What's your name, German? Levi? No, I'm talking about your real name, German. <laughs> lobe? I thought so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were brown back then, though. Uh, the American jeans, the American work pants were brown until uh, 1890. That's when the patent ran out. And that's when the first pair of 501s came out, and uh, they went to a, a blue jean and a more flexible jean. Uh, and of course, that's when the uh, the competition came along. 1895, Oshkosh Bagosh. Oh. 1904, Wrangler. Hmm. Get this. Back in the day, Wranglers were called bluebells. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's a delicious exactly. ice cream now, right? It is. Yeah. It, it's it's an average ice cream out of Texas. <laughs> delicious ice cream, if you ask me. It's okay. Yeah, they they 
tend to take it real serious down there. Um, <laughs> That's because it's Texas. It's hotter than hell. You got to have I some know, ice cream. Tom, I, I, my first job was in Texas, and they all, oh, Bluebell, Bluebell is so good. Bluebell is the best thing ever. Brenham, Texas. Bluebell. And I was like, yeah, Ben and Jerry's is better. That's why they, you find it in more places. <laughs> Dude, I have one thing at Ben and Jerry's. I'm like, I'm a socialist. I don't care anymore. This is delicious, right? It's so good. It's it's so good. Uh, they were called waist overalls up until the 50s. Uh, they weren't called blue jeans. Waist overalls. Hmm. Uh, until the 1930s, uh, basically blue collar people were the only ones wearing jeans. And then the movies came around. Uh, John Wayne wore jeans in his westerns. Carol Lombard and Ginger Rogers wore jeans in their films and uh, people started emulating them. Uh, but not everybody thought it was a good. Uh, there was a book back in the day. Uh, it's called The Wife Dressing, The Fine Art of Being a Well-Dressed Wife, written, of course, by Ann Fogarty. And Ann said if women wanted to keep their husbands, they should not wear blue jeans. Yoga pants. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I was like, wear nothing at all. Uh, <laughs> who, who the hell was that? I like uh, this guy. <laughs> Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back. Bring back the funny guy. <laughs> uh, they, uh, designers say that the reason blue jeans are popular is because they flatter many different parts of the body all at once. <laughs> Willie, you want to list those parts for me? Well, I think it starts with butt one, and then after that, yeah. it goes to butt two, and then yeah. after yeah. that, I feel I don't I feel like people like the rivets in the knees. You know what I'm talking about? A little hole. Yeah. The where it gets the little creases in the back of the knee, and then the jean looks more nice and stretched out after huh. it kind of. Oh. I like the yeah. jeans after you wear them a few times. You get a few washes in, and they kind of settle in. That's when I think they look good. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah, yeah, you missed the crouch. That's uh, oh. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Um, please. 1950s, I mean, uh, more movies, more jeans. Uh, James Dean wore them in one of the first color movies, Rebel Without a Cause. They dip-dyed the jeans to make them really pop blue. Marlon Brando, the wild one. Uh, Elvis wore jeans all the time. Marilyn Monroe wore them in The Misfits and Clash by Night. You guys see what's going on here? Basically, the cool people in the era wore a certain clothing. And, and, and uh, you know, young kids emulated them. That's why when I was in high school, uh, Richard Simmons was the cool guy. Uh, that's why I always wore uh, the uh, nylon running shorts and the, the tank top when I was in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Loves, good yeah, I got a question. Are you, do, are you taking questions? <laughs> yeah, sure. Huh? What are dungarees versus jeans? I don't exactly know, but I do know they uh, came from, actually predated everything that I said, Dungri, India. Really? Uh, that was, yeah, Dungri, D-U-N-G-R-I, India, had a certain type of work pant uh, in the 17th century. It was a, a coarse cloth for workers. But I don't know. I think they're all kind of the same thing. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, bib and brace overalls are called dungarees. Hmm. So, yeah, usually worn as protective clothing while working, but then they've got pictures of guys wearing what would look like traditional blue jeans. So I don't know. Yeah, either. jeans are dungarees, too, I think. Okay. Um, right. what, you know, the 19th. Are, are you wearing time. pants right now? We can only see you from the shoulders up. Uh, it's my business, really. <laughs> well, I mean, are, are, you, are, you wearing, are you wearing jeans right now? No, I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing shorts because I gotta uh, go to this trainer and get stretched out after this. So yeah, um, what stretched out? Huh? Trainer? Is that what they're calling it these days? You're fine. <laughs> so I put you back to it. Shut up, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the entire show live or on demand at BobandTom.com. Hey man, this is Donnie Baker. If you just like that video, then do your part. Like and subscribe. You have to. It's state law.